Hello, my name is Andrea Clary. I'm a field applications engineer for the Keithley products. And today I want to walk through a process by which we can measure the threshold voltage of a power MOSFET device using a Keithley source meter and the Kickstart software. So here in the, um, in the Word doc, I've got uh, just a typical transfer curve that you might see where on the x-axis here, we have our gate voltage. And on the y-axis, we have the drain current. Um, and then the, there are various, um, I'll call rules or techniques by which you, we extract threshold voltage from that. Now for a power MOSFET, we often see on the data sheet for threshold voltage is indication they'll say that the, the VDS equals the VGS, and then they're going to call out a certain amount of drain current uh, uh, that should result for to meet the test condition and the uh, the voltage required to do that should be no less than two, no more than four, but is going to typically be about 2.9. Now, to manage the voltage on those two different terminals of that MOSFET, conventionally we might use two source meter uh, channels for that, and for uh, different types of IV tests on transistors, in fact, you will need you know. Uh, more than one source meter uh, channel. However, for this power FET, since we've got the VGS equals VDS condition, if we make some other assumptions, we can get by with just a single source meter channel. So in particular, so in this case, we're going to, uh, when we uh, install the device in the test fixture, we're going to put a jumper between the drain and the gate. And then the single source measure unit will apply a voltage um, with respect to the low, which is at the source terminal of the device. And so that way my, my gate and my drain are maintained at the same voltage. Now, the current that that source measure, meter measures is going to be the sum of the current that leaks through the gate as well as what goes you know, through the, the, the IDS of there. So we're going to get the sum of those. But you know, for the purpose of this test, we could say by spec here on this, if we calls out if, if we had all the way up to 20 volts on the gate. Now remember for this test, we're gonna need a lot less. But if we had all the way up to 20 volts, we should maximally have 250 nanoamps. And that 250 nanoamps is only 0.01% of the two and a half milliamps that we're going to drive this transistor to. So, you know, kind of up to you, but this is, uh, it fe feels like a point where we can kind of um, make the assumption that, that that error source of the gate leakage contributing will be negligible. Um, and in fact, if you wanted to verify that the uh, current here, the gate current was, was sufficiently low, we could directly measure it with this source meter also. Okay, um, quick review of the test setup here. I happen to have a 2657A source meter. Um, I've got three uh, high voltage triax cables that uh, connect the source meter to my 8010 test fixture. And then of course, since this is a high voltage source meter, there is a safety interlock. Uh, and then we use this cable to uh, interface the source meter to the, uh, to the door switch on the chamber. Uh, to operate it all, we're gonna use the Kickstart version 2.9 software that's installed on Windows 10. And I'm connected over LAN to the 2657A. Now inside that test fixture, it has various uh, test boards. Uh, I have a TO247 uh, socket here, and the, uh, the, the three pins on that TO247 are brought out to these binding posts. And you'll see there's, there's pairs, right? So a pair of yellow ones, a pair of uh, white and blue. And that's so that we can make uh, four wire or Kelvin connections to the device terminals uh, when appropriate. And then just kind of coming back to that idea, the, um, the jumper that connects our drain to our source is just between two of the binding posts here. And then the, um, the source meter, you know, connections on those high voltage triacs, they're broken out inside the test fixture for us. And I'm able to just use the supplied uh, jumper wires to then connect the high of my source meter to the drain and the low to the source and then with the jumper. All right, let's, let's switch over, um, let's do the test, and then let's just, just as a reminder, we're, uh, we're gonna sweep that. We're looking for two and a half milliamps, and should be more than two, less than four, but typically 2.9. So here's, here's the Kickstart software, 
you can see I've got the uh, instrument is on is on LAN in terms of the apps that it uses. It uses this IB characterizer app. Um, but here I've got the forcing function is voltage. It's in sweep mode. And we're just going to go, I'm just going 0 to 3. I, I put a 50 milliamp limit in here. Um, you can see the number of points I'm going to do, which corresponds to that step size as we 0 to 3 and 10 millivolt steps. On the ranging here, I'm auto ranging, but I'm I'm saying uh, just use your 100 microamp and higher range as necessary. So anyway, let's give it a run. And you know, so the the data is available in tabular form, or we can come over here to the graph. And there it is. So um, kind of coming in there. Let me uh, let me place a cursor on here and you know, so I can move that until I get about, you know, two, two, five. Um, let's zoom in a little bit, making my life easier here. So, um, you know, so, you know, almost 2.6 volts to get to the 2.5 milliamps. So that's, you know, that's pretty much in spec with uh, what, what the data sheet predicts there. Um, let's do a little, uh, one setting change here. Let me enable one lower range on this, and then I'm going to run it again. Okay, now that it's completed, I'm going to overlay the two graphs. And here on the linear scale, looks terrific. They, they overlay very nicely. I'm going to put it on a log scale. And here you, we can see, now there's, you can see the difference, um, possibly benefit of, so the, the run number 15 in this case was the most recent one where I enabled one lower current measure range. And you can see my low level values here are coming in uh, significantly low, you know, pico amps. Um, but, you know, again, with the cursor, we're, we're trying to operate out here at the, at the uh, microamp level. So, um, you know, whether these values are important to you and uh, worth incurring a little more um, test time in order to um, to acquire them is is really up up to you. So that's mainly the the trade off here is that as you enable the more sensitive ranges, typically more settling time is going to be required to get uh, a good a good outcome. So anyhow, I hope you found that useful. And